the advantage of a one-piece back to a two-piece back. Today I am going to answer some questions. Um, now I've been getting lots and lots of questions, uh, you know, in my comments and things like that. So today I am going to answer some of the questions. Hi Olaf, is it safe to clean this string with lighter fluid? Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Ask Olaf the Violin Maker. So first question is... Hey Olaf, hi Olaf. I'm practicing to play violin without a shoulder rest and I've noticed the underside of the violin where my shoulder is is getting dirty. How do you prevent this? This one is easy. Use a cloth. I'll show you. Okay, got a violin and... Uh, Easiest way to do this is literally put a cloth just here over the chin rest and on your shoulder. Now your instrument is protected. So you try and pull it back as far as possible. You can also try and get a smaller cloth. I just use a cleaning cloth in this process, but uh, um, yeah, so this is so out of tune. <laughs> So, that will keep the underside of the instrument clean. Uh, if you're worried, at the end of playing, always just wipe the instrument down and uh, maybe use a different cloth than the one you put on your shoulder. Um, yeah, wipe the instrument down and that way you keep the instrument a lot cleaner. Um, definitely a good thing to do. Also, if you always wash your hands before you play, Super important, it keeps the whole instrument clean. This is just a little trick, and I always recommend to wipe your whole instrument down after playing anyway. All right, next question. Hey Olaf, could you please make a video on proper rosining processes? Because a lot of people are confused about the best way to rosin. Long, slow, heavy strokes, short, fast strokes, how to gauge the proper amount and how to get it off if you have too much. Also, the different types of rosins and how they suit different players. Today, I'm mainly going to be talking about how to rosin. I'll probably end up doing a whole video on different types of rosins. But for now, I will just go with how to rosin. So here's a bow of mine. It's my Fleuriel bow. And the way I rosin, firstly, um, I always rosin more on the ends, so more down the bottom and the top. So this rosin is kind of a bit chewed. It's my Melos rosin, but it, uh, I think it got a little bit warm and it kind of shape shifted. Don't let your rosin get hot. If your rosin gets hot, it changes shape. Also, don't drop your rosin and you just have to buy a new one. All right, so the way I rosin is I actually don't rosin a lot. So I put more on the ends like this, then long stroke, bit more on the tip, long stroke, bit more down the bottom, long stroke at the tip, maybe a couple of extra strokes and I'm done. That's it. So what, that was maybe about seven passes over the whole thing and then like more towards the end. And the reason you put more on the end is because when you're playing down the bottom, the bow, you know, it grabs a little bit more and then up the top again, you, you're using a bit more rosin. Uh, the thing is, some players say you have to rosin every time you play. That depends on how much you play. What if you only play 10 minutes a day? Your rosin, your bow will literally end up with mostly rosin and a little bit of bow left. Like, it'll be all dusty. So, you don't want that. So, what I recommend is to rosin up between, you know, once every one to three hours, depending on how heavily you play. So, this, like, to, to find the really exact amount of rosining, you need to listen carefully. So when your bow is responding well, you don't have to rosin. And when it stops responding, you know, it's time, like if it slides a little bit, it's time to rosin. If you keep rosining and it really isn't making it any better, then it's time for a rehair. If you've put way too much rosin on, just get a cleaning cloth, like your violin cleaning cloth, and wipe it off. Just be very careful. Don't use liquids and things like that. Just just wipe it off dry. So you can see my cloth is totally white and there should be heaps less rosin on the bow. 
I'll just rosin it back up now because I've just wiped all the rosin off. So the way to really know if you've rosined right is play the instrument, like play the bow. And when you get a nice grip and a nice sound, you've got the correct amount of rosin. If it sounds scratchy, you've probably got too much rosin. And also if it's depositing a lot of rosin dust onto the top plate and bridge and strings. And if it's a bit slidey, you're like you're not getting a good tone, it's probably got too little rosin or it's time for rehair. And you find out if it needs a rehair by rosining it, if it sounds like that, and if it doesn't improve, it's time for rehair. Did you know that soloists quite often get their bow rehaired every few concerts? Sometimes between literally between three or four concerts. So sometimes they will need to get their bow rehaired after about one to two weeks. Other times it might be a month or two. A lot of professionals get their bow rehaired every six months. And if you're not a professional, two years will probably do it. Just depends a little bit. Okay, um, I'm not gonna discuss rosins too much. I just know that lighter rosins um, are a little bit finer and darker rosins give a more gritty uh, oomphy sound. So mm. darker rosins are probably better for like sort of more rocky and oomphy types of music whereas lighter rosins are probably better for classical rock music and that kind of stuff. Hello Olaf, I've been told it's better to put rosin on your bow after you play and not before. Is this true? I don't think so. I don't really think it makes a difference. I don't know where you got that from, but I don't think it makes a difference and it should be fine to rosin up before you play. So I was wondering, what's the difference between a one-piece back and a two-piece back on a violin? There are no disadvantages or advantages to the sound. It's just what you like better. It's For a maker, it's actually a little bit easier to make an instrument with a single-piece back because you don't have to join the back. But, you know, it really doesn't matter. For the sound and playability, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, obviously it looks different. And then you have the different types of cuts, but I'll, dis um, I'll discuss that another time. Hi, Olaf. Is it safe to clean the strings with lighter fluid, or is it just a myth? Don't do it. No. Like any kind of chemicals and things like that are not good near your instrument. Uh, I always recommend just cleaning your strings with a dry cloth like this. Uh, I just recommend cleaning your strings often, like every day, like this. If it's gone too far, there are some solvents, um, like alcohol and things like that, that, that will take the rosin off the, off the strings. The problem is, those solvents will also take the varnish off the instrument. So if you're not skilled at this, you know, you can put a drop of solvent on the instrument and ruin your varnish. And I remember very well, it's, at one point, uh, there was a myth going around that um, perfume is good to clean because perfume contains alcohol, that perfume is a good thing to clean the strings with, and a player cleaned the violin with perfume. One drop neatly went onto the instrument and it literally took a circle of varnish off this instrument. Like it was quite a nice old instrument. And I was able to retouch it and you couldn't see the repair, but it was quite a costly little experiment. So don't do it. It's just not worth it. Unless you've got a super cheap instrument where it doesn't matter anyway, but I just wouldn't do it. What do you think of the recent scientific studies that suggest that the best varnish for violins is regular hardware store spa varnish? The kind people use on their decks and outdoor furniture. They strongly indicate that the varnishes concocted by violin makers are comfy, something like that. Also suggests that the varnish used by the old Italian masters was nothing more than the marine spa varnish of the day. Don't do it. Don't ruin a good violin with 
decking varnish. It wouldn't work. So yes, the you're right. The violin makers of the day used to go to their local chemist and buy the varnish. I've actually got a really nice little video of me going into the chemist in Cremona. In Cremona at the moment. It's absolutely beautiful. And uh, I'm walking past a pharmacy right here. Pharmacy. And what's really amazing is that it's been established in uh, 1734. So that was three years before Stradivarius would have died. So this chemist has been here for almost 300 years. And that chemist has been around since the early 1700s. So I actually walked into the same chemist that some famous violin makers may have walked into 300 years ago nearly 300 years ago but no so they got their varnish they probably got their varnish from the chemists or the pharmacies of the time but don't use that kind of varnish that's terrible the the uh, a lot of the varnishes that were used were boiled together out of linseed oil and various resins uh, that's been scientifically proven there's also some other elements in there and especially in the ground but, uh, and these are varnishes that new makers are using a lot now as well. But there are lots of different types of varnishes that makers use um, today. Back then there was a lot of oil varnishes and then um, things like shellac came out, you know, as the trade routes expanded, people went to Indonesia and got stuff like shellac and other amazing rosins and played around with them. So some of the French and German makers played around with a lot of the different varnishes, uh, but the old oil varnish is really lovely still. There's one thing is a lot of those oil varnishes actually wear very easily and on a lot of the famous old instruments the varnish that's left is quite often there's only like about 10 percent of original varnish left you know if even less anyway these are the questions that i can answer for today um keep asking questions i'll make another video like this one keep playing keep having fun i know a lot of people are in lockdown and partial lockdown things are closed you know getting back into your or getting into your instrument is the perfect way to kind of you know to find peace and and harmony in your life so keep you know keep playing your instrument keep making be beautiful music keep practicing and uh and thanks so much for watching if you like the video click the like button but also subscribe because it's been proven scientifically by the same people that have been researching violin varnish that people who subscribe to my channel are definitely better string players definitely i think i read something like that anyway subscribe click on the little bell ding ding and you will find out every time i post a new video all right see you guys later bye